So if we had the 2023 and 2024 Dynasty rookie draft classes face off, what would that look like if we were to rank them together? Well, that's what I'm going to do for you guys today. A lot of people have been asking us to make a video like this, so I'm bringing it to you. And keep in mind that these rankings for the 24 class in particular are fluid. They absolutely will change. Do me a favor, drop a like to show some support. Subscribe if you like Dynasty content. And I want you to comment down below right now who's a player in 2024 that you think their value is going to skyrocket. I will bring my player. But if you guys want to see my rankings, Badaki's rankings, uh, some of the best people in the industry, their rankings, articles, exclusives, consider signing up to Flock Fantasy. Go to flockfantasy.com slash land. Use our code land, L-A-N-D, for 30% off your subscription. It's a two-day free trial. So if you love the site, which I think you will, you can decide if it's worth your time. Okay, we're going to go five tiers. And keep in mind, I tried to stay as true as I possibly could to 24 players, top 24, 12 uh, from each class, or let's see how it works out. But I tried my best to stay true to that 24 number. So let's start in tier number five. And I think the first player I'll bring up, please keep in mind that I'm not bringing this from a tight end premium perspective, okay? I'm bringing this from a dynasty super flex perspective, not tight end premium. Um, and I think I would have Michael Mayer probably as one of the last players in this top 24. Keep in mind, we're combining two very good classes together. So all the players who are in this list are, are good players. But in a non-tight end, tight end premium format, it's hard to put Michael May Mayer ahead of some of these other guys, even though I think he is a complete tight end. Didn't test the way we wanted him to at the combine. But to be fair, we didn't really see a lot of speed on film. So I still think he's the most complete tight end in the class and someone that you can start day one. Versatile guy, very good pass catcher and good after the catch. So as well, right next to Michael Mayer here in this tier five, I'm going to bring my first quarterback, which would be Quinn Ewers. OK, all the talk in Texas town right now is about Arch Manning, as it should be, because he was, you know, the one of the biggest signings or recruits rather out of high school recently. But Quinn had some shades. He, he showed some flashes this year with Xavier Worthy, B. John Robinson and the rest of that team. I didn't see the consistency, but you saw some real flashes of what could be a quality starting NFL quarterback. Again, he was a red shirt freshman. He'll be a redshirt sophomore this season. Let's see if he can build off of that. I think he can. Uh, I think he and Xavier Worthy can have a very, very good year. Speaking of Xavier Worthy, he didn't make my top 24 rankings, if you will. I just don't know that the, his size is going to hold up in the NFL. I mean, he's even smaller than Devonta Smith by a significant margin. Okay. And the other play that, player that I have in tier five, which... Honestly, I feel like he could be in a higher tier is Will Shipley. I am a very, very big Will Shipley guy. I'm I'm all aboard the Will Shipley train. It might not seem like it because I have him in the fifth tier. But again, all of these players who I'm going to be talking about today are very, very good players. You're taking two good classes and combining them together. But when we talk about Will Shipley, we're talking about a five star recruit, one of the most sought after recruits as a running back out of high school, the number two running back in his recruiting class, a complete all around running back. A little bit of shades of Joe Mixon, a miniature version of maybe CMC. Not He's not ever going to be as good as CMC, but I think he could have a huge, huge year. And I'm excited about his draft capital potentially rising. I mean, right now I have him in tier five. I think he could be all the way up in tier three. That's the quality of player I believe Will Shipley is. Okay, to start my tier four, I told you at the beginning of this video for you guys to comment down below, who is a player that you think will have a massive rise this year that's a part of the 24 class? For me, that player is wide receiver Malik Neighbors out of LSU. And I think I devalued Malik Neighbors until I recently got into a little bit of his film. This is a very good player prospect four-star recruit the size is pretty good over six foot right around 200 pounds i believe he outperformed outperformed keishan butte all year long and he was the star on this team not butte 
And I couldn't understand that for a while until I actually reviewed the film. And I was like, okay, this guy is clearly the better wide receiver prospect. Explosive, physical, versatile. You can play him all over the field. And he's got real legitimate burner speed. I think this guy could be running 4-4 four, 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 four flat around there with his size is, is quite impressive. He had 72 receptions, over 1,000 yards, and three touchdowns on the year. But keep in mind, this LSU offense, it took a little while for them to get clicking in the air. Like, Jaden Daniels did not transfer from Arizona State and just everything clicked day one. It took a while for this receiving, uh, passing offense, rather, to really get its bearings. But eventually, they did figure it out. And if you look at Malik Neighbors' last three games of the season... These are his averages, 8.3 targets a game, 6.3 receptions a game, over 100 receiving yards a game, and 0.67 touchdowns a game. If you look at his last three games and you take that over a 12-game pace, which is your typical college football season, you would be looking at 76 receptions, over 1,300 receiving yards, and 8 touchdowns. And that is a high bar to claim, but I legitimately think that Malik Neighbors could hit those numbers here in his second season. The connection with Jaden Daniels is very special. You hear Brian Kelly talking about that connection. I think they're gonna be this dynamic duo in college football here in 2023 slash 2024. So I wanna put some love on Malik Neighbors and uh, he is one of those names that I think he could solidify himself as a first round pick in dynasty drafts next year, as well as in the real NFL draft. Okay, the next player we're gonna talk about here is Donovan Edwards. Yes, I know Blake Corm is at Michigan. He didn't make my list. Roast me in the comments below if you want. But Blake Corm is going to be another year older. The concerns about the injury. I'm just not sure that NFL teams are going to want to spend high draft capital on a player like Blake Corm. And honestly, if we're looking at them just as prospects, I prefer Donovan Edwards as a prospect over Blake Corm. I love the versatility ton of juice in the open field i'm seeing a little bit of shades of like an alvin kamara type player blake quorum still a very good player but again the age and the injuries is what's going to concern me i just don't think nfl teams are going to spend high draft capital on a guy like blake quorum who is a very good player in his own right you know the the ceiling comp for for blake is a like a um ah like a rice the running back i can't slip in my mind right now Rice out of Baltimore, Ray Rice, sorry. Um, so that is the kind of player that you could be looking at there. But with Donovan Edwards, I just think he's a more complete running back prospect. Just one man's opinion. And here is where I would start to put in some of these wide receivers from this year's class. This is where I would probably have Zay Flowers, uh, a wide receiver that I love, that I've been touting on the channel. I probably put him right here. It's also where I would put Jordan Addison. Two very good wide receivers who have strengths in different areas. I would say Zay, Zay Flowers is this electric after the catch type player, whereas Jordan Addison is this very good elite route runner type build. But Addison is not uh, anywhere near the player is Zay is after the catch. So pick your poison between those two. And right ahead of them is where I would currently place Braylon Allen, running back out of Wisconsin. I have been higher on Braylon Allen than... Most of like, I guess you could say the Devi community as a whole. I'm in love with Braylon Allen. This dude is a freak of a human being. Four-star recruit, actually from Wisconsin, signs with Wisconsin to play there. He is six foot one, 235 pounds. You heard that right. Six foot one, 235. <laughs> the body type is so ridiculous that people didn't actually originally recruit him to be a running back they were trying to recruit him to play linebacker they were trying to recruit him to play safety the build on this kid is ridiculous he's not from this planet he will be a junior this year as a true freshman at the age of 17 to 18 he put up over 1200 yards 6.8 yards per carries and 12 touchdowns on the ground uh, there was actually a stint when he was a true freshman, again, at the age of 17 slash 18, there was a two game stint where he put up over 400 rushing yards. Uh, this is probably the closest comp that I have seen to Derrick Henry since Derrick Henry entered the league. He is that kind of player. 
you could give him 20 touches today, right now, today in an NFL offense, and he would reward you handsomely with the play that he's going to give you. Right ahead of Braylon Allen, because I think he's a more complete running back prospect with what he showed this last year at UCLA, would be Zach Charbonnet. And honestly, I think Charbonnet could be up a tier higher, but uh, it's just tough with the other guys in this tier three. It's, it's a very good two set of classes that we're looking at here. That's the end of my tier four. Let's get into my tier three. And as I said previously with Michael Mayer, I am not speaking from this video in talking. I'm not talking about Titan premium. This is not a Titan premium focus video. So even though he is a generational prospect at the Titan position, this is probably as high as I could put Brock Bowers. The best Titan prospect since Kyle Pitts, no doubt. Four star recruit. Um, all the boxes are checked athletically. In fact, big shout out to Campus to Canton, who I have talked about this information before, but their best athletic comp to Brock Bowers, you're looking at Kyle Pitts, George Kittle, Jared Cook, Darren Waller. Like this is one of those tight ends who could be top five for decades, decades and not, not decades and decades, but for a decade, you could literally have like a top five option at the position. How highly do you value that? in a non titan premium format. You will have to find that out for yourself. But if you look at Brock Bowers against tight ends in 2022, of all tight ends in college football, I believe the minimum I put on this was 35 targets for these numbers. But first in receiving yards, fifth in receiving touchdowns. If you look at yards per reception, he was fourth. Yards per route run, he was third. Yards after the catch, he was first in the nation. Yards after the catch per reception, he was fourth. He had the fourth best contested catch percentage. He caught 13 of 17 contested catches, which is very impressive. That's 76.5% of the time. And he was third in first downs. He also is an extremely versatile tight end. I would consider him like a weapon rather than just a tight end, kind of the way that we talk about guys like Kyle Pitts, those type of prospects. He spent about 60% of his time in the slot and 30% time in line. So you can put this guy anywhere you want all over the field. He there's very likely chance that he's a top 15 pick in the NFL draft next year. Uh, he's going to be a no brainer in rookie drafts. Uh, it just depends on how your league values tight ends right next to Brock Bowers. Cause we are looking at this from a super flex perspective is where I would currently have Will Levis. Um, do we want to take a tight end? Who's a lock for top 15 draft capital or in a super flex league, a quarterback who is potentially locked for top 10 draft capital. As many of the, cons as I have, sorry, as many concerns as I have with Will Levis, I still think I'm gonna lean towards the quarterback who's getting the draft capital. This is also where I would put Quentin Johnston. Now, I have more concerns about Quentin Johnston than your average person, but just from an athletic profile, this dude is a freak athlete. Was added to Bruce Feldman's freak list last year. Um, jumps out of the gym, performed pretty well at the combine. And I think what separates Quentin Johnson from all these just these tall wide receiver prospects, you know, is what he does after the catch. Quentin Johnson is electric after the catch. And you, that is hard to find with his size to find someone who is that good after the catch. Uh, I think the body catching can be fixed. It can be coached out of him. Okay, the next two players that I'm going to talk about today I don't know where to stand, okay? That is Travion Henderson, and that is Jameer Gibbs. I truly don't know which way to lean right now. I would say if you're looking at them just from their build, then you would put Travion Henderson ahead of Jameer Gibbs, and I think that's fair, right? If we look at Travion Henderson, I believe he's 5'11", 215 off the top of my head. I could be wrong, but I think he's right around that size. We look at Jameer Gibbs, he's right around that 200 pound mark. Better prospect uh, out of high school would be Travion Henderson, five-star recruit, number one recruit in uh, in his in his high school class, huge hype name. With Travion, I loved his 2021 film. I mean, he looked like a lock to be a first-round running back in the NFL draft. In 2022, it was a little bit different, and I'm aware that he was dealing with some injuries, so we have to keep that in mind but he just did not look like the same player in 2022. And if we see this trend continue where incredible 2021 season, but 22 and 23, there's question marks on film. 
he won't be a first round pick. We need him to recover that 2021 form. And I still think it's very possible in 2021 as a freshman, put up over 1200 yards on the ground at 6.8 yards per attempt. Very impressive, 15 rushing touchdowns. He added 300 more yards through the air and four touchdowns through the air. And then as a sophomore, again, there was a lot of injuries, but only four receptions. Uh, the yards per attempt went down quite drastically. Again, dealing with some injuries, but we need Travion Henderson to have the year that he had in 2021 again in 2023 for him to be considered a legit first round running back. But all the talent is there. We just need him to recover that form. At this very moment, I know Jameer Gibbs is probably a end of the first round, beginning of the second round pick. So I will lean that way. But there's a very realistic chance that Travion Henderson could be all the way up here in tier two by this time next year. Uh, so a difficult player to really project. You decide on and, and tell me in the comments below who you prefer at this very moment. But if we're looking at Trayvon Henderson in this draft class, he's in consideration right around the 106 for me. Right around the 106 value. Okay. And the last player that I would have here in tier three is a wide receiver that I think is, he's, he's like disrespected, I think. He's not talked about enough. With these Ohio State wide receivers, we rave about Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave because they deserve it, Jackson Smith and Jigba because he deserves it, Marvin Harrison because he deserves it. But for some reason, Amika Egbuka is not getting enough respect on his name, and I want to be that person for him. Five-star recruit. In the 2021 high school class, he was the number one wide receiver in the nation. In 2022, put up over 1,000 yards through the air and nine touchdowns. As a player, as a prospect, incredible route runner very smooth in and out of his cuts consistently separating from whoever is trying to guard him very good after the catch think of like young rookie juju and you know juju is such a name that we can like trash on right now but rookie juju was incredible after the catch that's the type of player i'm seeing here chris godwin when he had his breakout year young juju michael crabtree a little bit he has the size to play anywhere on the field and i almost feel like Bef the year before Chris Olave came out, he was disrespected. That's what I feel like is happening right now with Amika Egbuka. He is a very good prospect, and I think he's, there's no way he fails in the NFL. Let me say that. With his skill sets, he can succeed in the NFL, and he can play anywhere on the field, and I'm a big fan of his. So we're going to go ahead and get into the Tier 2 now. First player I would put in Tier 2 would be Anthony Richardson. I have been trying to play the realistic card here with Anthony Richardson as much as I possibly can. What he did at the combine was uber impressive. Something that we've really never seen before, if we're honest with ourselves. But that doesn't negate the film. That doesn't negate the questions that we have about him being a consistent starter in the NFL. Can he make the wow throws in these these plays where we're like, how did he just run for 80 yards? How did he break all those tackles? How did he make that throw on the run? Yes, we see that on film. But if he can't ever figure out how to be a consistent passer, none of that will matter. And that is his biggest area of weakness, weakness right now, is the touch on the ball and the accuracy. He's got an absolute rocket for an arm, but he can't place it where he wants to all the time. And if you can't do that consistently, it won't matter how athletic you are. So I want to be realistic. I don't want to undervalue him or overvalue him. And this is where I would currently have him at this very moment. And I know that's been a debate for everyone in Dynasty right now. Right ahead of Anthony Richardson is where I would put my RB1 in the 2024 class, which would be Raheem Rocket Sanders. You just got to watch one, one game of this guy's film to be blown away by him as a prospect. I've compared him before to Ezekiel Elliott, young Ezekiel Elliott, and I think that's what you're getting as a prospect. The combination of power, burst, break tackle ability, versatility. I mean, he is a complete running back, and he's standing at six foot two, 227 pounds. He can do everything you want from a running back, and he's going to probably cause some serious harm to any defender that's trying to break, to try and trying to take him down. In 2022, last year, over 1,400 rushing yards at 6.5 yards per attempt in the SEC. Let me say that again. 
6.5 yards per attempt in the SEC versus the best def defense that you can possibly face in college football. Fourth in yards per attempt amongst running backs with 200 plus carries. The best yards per attempt in the SEC with running backs who had 200 plus carries. Okay, quite literally the definition of a do it all running back. But the juice is ridiculous and you'll see that on film. Again, I see a little bit of a Ezekiel Elliott type player when I'm watching his film. So after Raheem Sanders, I would put Jackson Smith and Jigba. One of my favorite prospects in this year's class. I know a lot of people have their opinions on JSN. He's my wide receiver one. I don't see how he fails in the NFL. Incredible route runner. I've gone through that over and over and over again. You guys know how I feel about JSN. I think he's a locked and loaded uh, top 15 to 20 pick in the NFL draft. And I think he's going to make an impact in fantasy as a rookie year one. The skill set is absolutely trans. Uh, it can actually transition uh, day one to the NFL. This is also where, and keep in mind, this, these are where the tiers get a little more difficult because we have to include the 24 class, okay? And this is where I would put, personally, CJ Stroud and Bryce Young. I love these quarterbacks. I'm a huge fan of them. And I think they absolutely should be considered, They Bryce Young and CJ Stroud should not be available after the 103 in any of your rookie drafts this year in Superflex. However, as much as I love these quarterbacks, I think next year there are two quarterbacks that I love even more. And I think they are better overall prospects. So let me go ahead and start with Drake May. At this very moment, right here, right now, I am betting on Drake May to be a better prospect than both CJ Stroud and Bryce Young. Let me know in the comments below if you disagree. But I think if you disagree, you maybe haven't watched a little bit of, you know, en enough of Drake May, and I would encourage you to go do so. Four-star recruit. He was a redshirt uh, freshman, excuse me, this year. He is six foot four, 220 pounds. And if you look at Drake May versus other quarterbacks in college football in 2022, and remember, including A. Rich, Will Levis, Stroud, Bryce Young. Let's look at him. He was sixth in pass touchdowns. He was fourth in passing yards. He was first in big time throws with 45. No one's even close to him with that number, by the way, big time throws. First with 45. He was second in big time throw percentage at 8.4%. 8.4% of his throws are classified as big time throws, which by the way, if you don't know what that is, it's a analytic from PFF and a big time throw is a pass with excellent ball location and timing generally thrown further down the field or into a tighter window. So in all of college football, he had the second highest percentage uh, of people who had like, I think it was like 200 dropbacks is what I put, um, which most starting quarterbacks would have that. But at the same time, he faced the most pressure of any quarterback in college football. He was pressured 235 times. So the offensive line was not really doing his job. He also scrambled the most of any quarterback last year, and he had the third best pass grade according to PFF. Not only was he incredible through the air, and he is the perfect modern day quarterback for what we're looking for, an improviser, a big body. Like This is to me shades of Justin Herbert, shades of Trevor Lawrence, Joe Burrow. That's the type of player we're looking at here with Drake May. Oh, and by the way, he rushed for almost 700 yards and seven touchdowns on the ground as well last year. So this man put up, was it 44 touchdowns altogether? Almost 700 rushing yards. I mean, there's running backs that we're talking about in this year's class that didn't even put up 700 rushing yards. Drake May is, in my opinion, a better prospect than Bryce and CJ. Let me know if you disagree, but I think he's going to have an incredible year. Anything can change. Because I'm thinking, you know, in my mind right now about how Sam Howell's stock completely fell. But I think Drake May is locked and loaded as a top three pick in next year's draft. Okay, at number, uh, sorry, not at number two, but the next player I would have is Marvin Harrison Jr. Four-star recruit, you know Marvin Harrison Jr., son of Colts le legend Marvin Harrison, was very good this year. I think we're all on board that Marvin Harrison is like one of the best wide receiver prospects we've seen since maybe Jamar Chase. You know, if we're being realistic about it, maybe since Jamar Chase, I would say. Um, and there are two players left, okay? The next one will be B. John Robinson. 
I would have B. John Robinson as my 102 in this format. And honestly, I think that both Bijan and Marvin Harrison are interchangeable. Who do you want? Do you want Bijan or do you want Marvin? I think most people would actually say Marvin because they want to build around their wide receivers and I hear you. So let's make that change right here right now. But they are the same caliber of player in Dynasty rookie drafts. They both have consideration to be for Bijan 101, for Marvin Harrison, the second pick in 2024. And the reason Marvin Harrison is the second pick in 2024 is because we have one of the best quarterback prospects, I would say in the last five years. Uh, well, he's in that conversation. Let's just say that he's in that conversation. And that is Caleb Williams. He would be my 101 if I combined these classes as of right now. Things can change, but as of right now, he would be my most valuable player if you combine 23 and 24 class. Since Patrick Mahomes came into the NFL and developed into an absolute superstar, he's one of the best, one of the best quarterbacks we've ever seen. There's no one that I felt comfortable comping him to as far as their ceiling until Caleb Williams. Of course, it's much more likely that he never reaches that, that ceiling because it's unrealistic. But his play, when you watch it, the off-schedule throws, the arm strength, the command of an offense, the... I'm leaning back on my wrong foot and I just threw a 50 yard dart down the field. Like the improvisation, everything is there for the modern day superstar quarterback in the NFL. He was first in passing touchdowns here in 2022 amongst quarterbacks in college football. He was third in passing yards. He was fourth in big time throws with 32. He had the third most pressure and he scrambled 36 times, which was 20th. If you look at his NFL passer rating, it was fourth. And his PFF grade was sixth. And he also rushed for almost 400 yards and 10 touchdowns on the ground. 52 total touchdowns. Anything can change at the moment. But right now, if we were to draft in 2024, Caleb Williams is the first overall pick. And no one's even asking questions about it, in my mind. GMs are not asking questions about it. Caleb Williams is the guy. So, wow, I feel like I just talked for like 30 minutes straight, which I pretty much did. But... That's how I would currently rank the 2024 versus the 2023 class. Do with this information what you want. Keep in mind that the 24 class is very fluid, whereas the 23 class, we, very, we feel very solidified with these guys right now. The 23 class versus the 24 class, the 24 class has a lot more questions, a lot more to be proven. Um, so a lot can change, but uh, this is where I would currently value that class ranked versus each other. So do me a favor, Drop a like to show some support. Subscribe if you like Dynasty content. And we'll see you guys in the next video. I'd love to know your thoughts on this. And enjoy the rest of your day. All love. Now that those idiots are done talking, who needs some rankings? Hell yeah, I need some rankings. Then use promo code LAND, L-A-N-D, for 30% off any membership at flockfantasy.com. Oh. It's so easy. Even your grandma could scan that QR code right there.